Good morning, everyone. Welcome. We are live today. I got it right this week. I got it right. We are live now. Um, so if you are here, drop a note in the chat. Say hello. I'm so used to seeing uh, people telling me that they're here from, um, let's see. Well, I just got a message that popped up that says that it looks like they're having trouble broadcasting to LinkedIn. So I'm hoping that we're all good here. Okay. And if you're on LinkedIn, that you are here. But we're recording regardless. So if you missed it, we'll make sure to post it and you'll be able to connect with us. We'll all be good. Um, so looking forward to chatting with Erica today because we have a great conversation. I've actually known Erica, I don't know how long. I was trying to remember this morning. <laughs> how long it's been and I couldn't, so I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here and it's always great to see you. I can't remember where we met. It's many years ago. More than ten. Is it more than ten? Okay. It might be. <laughs> I can't remember where though. How did we I don't remember. I think I feel like Lisa Gates had something to do with it, with like the outstanding mothers. Right, that's right. I had the professional networking group for working mothers, and Lisa Gates from She Negotiates. She introduced us, and okay. then you were on. Um, I think you were on a panel for us, actually. Yes, yeah. yes, and so trials and tribulations of motherhood. Right, exactly, yeah. and <laughs> and nothing much has changed really. The trials and tribulations of motherhood while trying to work during COVID, um, right. and so everything right. Exactly. But this just goes to show we talk about the networking, right? And how important networking is to your job, because I've known Erica for forever and we've probably gone, I don't know, a year or two without talking to each other. <laughs> and then I'll pop up and go, Erica, I need your help with this. Or, hey, I have this client referral for you. And it's like we talked last week, you know, and nothing changed. So I do want to... <laughs> formally allow Erica to introduce herself because she's the principal of Round Hill Search, which is a legal staffing and searching firm in Los Angeles. Um, and so, uh, Erica, introduce yourself to us. Yes, our good morning, group. everybody. So, um, as Stacy said, my name is Erica Moore Burton. Um, I'm the founder of Round Hill Search. We are a legal staffing and placement agency here in Los Angeles. I'm actually in my office today. Um, what we do is we place um, primarily attorneys, um, but we also work with uh, legal support as well, paralegals and support staff in placing them in law firms, um, AMLAW 100 law firms, all the way down to boutique uh, law firms. And uh, we work with corporate legal departments in placing those legal professionals as well and helping those corporate legal departments reduce their outside counsel fees by using contract attorneys as well. So we assemble teams of contract attorneys as well. Um, so there you have it. That I've been in the industry for over uh, 16 years now. So um, a long time. And you know, things have, things have uh, changed over the years and, and I'm seeing definitely the, um, uh, the, the highs and lows of, of uh, the industry in a myriad right. of different ways, put it that way. Yes, no, for sure. And I think we connected. Good morning, Selena. I see you. Um, we connected because, you know, as you all know, I used to recruit. And so I w worked with, with Erica. I would try to refer her clients or she would try to refer me clients because, as she said, she was, was dealing mainly in the legal services arena. Um, and way back in the day, I actually used to be a paralegal. <laughs> and um, yeah. I don't know if I knew that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You'll say that's another conversation for another live. Like I should do a live on the many jobs that Stacy has held. Right. That would be really funny. You guys would like that. Um, <laughs> but I think that this conversation today, we want to just talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, here we are in an environment in the middle of COVID where people are looking for work. And um, we've seen, you know, some law firms have done uh, a reduction in pay in order to not have to lay off. Uh, we're seeing where people are struggling to hire right now because they're having to do it remotely. They're having to onboard remotely. Um, you know, you're in your office today, but we're, we're kind of like, are we in phase two? Are we in phase three? Did we get pushed back to phase one? Where are we? We don't know. Um, and so I think that we wanted to just talk a little bit about what it's like to, um, you know, and, and what the opportunities are, I think, specifically in the legal field, but just in, 
you know, the environment in general right now for, for hiring. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting because you sighed really big. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, that means it's going to be, this is going to be a tough one. Yeah, no, 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 it is. And look, the different, like I've been through a recession in 2008. So sort of, it was different circumstances, you know, but a recession nonetheless. And the difference that I am seeing this time is that last time there were just mass layoffs, right? It was um, it, at all different levels. There were just so many layoffs, people were outright laid off and it was very difficult to get work back then. This time I'm noticing that firms are making uh, more of an effort to hold on to talent but they are making those uh, reductions in pay so that, you know, obviously they're looking at the bottom line, but making a reduction is better than being laid off outright. Right. So, so that's sort of a difference that I am seeing. Um, hiring is definitely slowed. I've seen it with my clients. I think we had so many um, roles in the pipeline at the beginning of March and every single one of them bar one or two came to sort of a grinding halt. It was kind of like, okay, we ju we're just in this wait and see mode. Um, you know, there have, there have been layoffs, of course. And, and I think it's, um, it's, it's tough out there and people had to get, first of all, it was the shock, right. Of what was going on. So there was the, there was the shock and now it's sort of like, okay, we're settling into this. I can't even say it's the new normal cause I still don't think it is the new normal, but we're settling into this, um, this phase of, okay, how are we going to move forward with our hiring needs as, and when they do come up. So, so I have clients that are now trickling back. And now they're kind of like, okay, so we have to do the remote onboarding with the questions that are being asked are very different. You know, what's their home setup? You know, do they have a computer? Do they have a printer? Do they have a scanner? What's all, you know, because there's, there, are, there are more things to think about now when it, right. when it comes to hiring. Um, you know, is it, is it back to where it was? Absolutely not, you know? And I think, I think we're on the slow road back, put it that way. Right. Um, but on the road, nevertheless put it that way. Right. So, so that's, I'm being optimistic there and, and hopeful that, that we're on the road to somewhere. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, you do a really great job. Like, you know, you're a legal staffing and search firm. You don't say you're a diversity search firm, right? But you ensure that your candidates are you diverse. How do you do that? Well, um, exhibit A, right? <laughs> <laughs> So um, I think for me, when I decided to start Roundhill Search, that was going to be a, a really important facet of the company that I wanted to sort of carve out. I wanted to be an advocate for diverse candidates. Um, so by virtue of our searches, um, when I'm looking for candidates, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for all candidates, but I am looking for diverse candidates. And I'm, I, I strongly advocate for um, diverse candidates. I recently had um, um, a couple of candidates actually that that were um, Nigerian, Nigerian candidates, and um, their backgrounds weren't, you know, traditional. They've been to, uh, they worked at law firms in Nigeria with, without much U.S. experience. Now I know that at previous staffing firms, with you know, with my my teams and everything, that candidate would have just been like, you know what, next, you know. <laughs> But for me, it's kind of like, no, this is valid experience. These are these are great candidates. We've got to advocate for them. So so the way in which I do it, I think it's I think it's personal. I think for my team, it's kind of like let's let's look at candidates, let's look at their backgrounds. Um, you know, a lot of my firms and clients have uh, diversity and inclusion initiatives. Um, so I'm whether there's an opening or not, I'm always going to say, hey, I've got this really great candidate that you should consider. You know, so. Yeah. I think it's um, it's it's intentional on my part, just because I I know from my experiences when I was on the other side of the coin, um, right. and and just knowing how difficult it is, you know, because we're often held to a higher standard, right? And we're right. often held to, you know, um, you know, ha let's look at the educational background. You know, minority lawyers are often held to uh, a higher standard in terms of the schools that they went to. Right. Um, did they graduate, yeah, you know, come loud, you know, what are, what are the extra credentials that they have to make right. them worthy candidates, which isn't right, obviously, but right. I think that, uh, you know, people need strong advocates and, and by virtue of who I am, my background, 
and what I've seen out there, I, I just am that person. No, that's great. And I think, and, and how do you make that case? Because it's like, okay, law firm, I have this candidate who does not have a traditional background. Mm -hmm. So you, you just go in and treat them like every other candidate, like, here we go. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I look at their background. I, I basically dissect the resume. I put together a really strong profile. Like these are the great, these are the things that this individual has done. You know, these are, these are the experiences that another candidate may not have that you should really look at. You know, we're not, we're talking about, you know, diversity of candidate. We're talking about diversity of thought. This candidate comes from here. Have you got somebody from this, from this area or this background or this part of the world or whatever it is, whatever that makes right. that person unique is sort of extracting it and presenting it to them in, in, in sort of a unique way. And just saying, look, meet them, meet right. them, you know, then let's have a conversation. And yeah. it's making it a positive asset, right? You know, it's like I was watching this video about, um, I don't even know how I ended up with this, but it was a video of um, a police force in like this small town in London that mm -hmm. had created this video about why they want to recruit diversity. And one of the things they had was, you know, an Indian a gentleman who said, you know, recruit me for my language ability, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can connect in the community. And so those are the things that we look at. We, you know, we sometimes look and go, oh, they're different, you mm -hmm. know, but that that's good. Different is good. Different is means that they have different skills that yeah. you don't currently have. And they now have access to a whole other market that you did not have access to previously. Exactly. So I think that's really great that um, you're making those, you know, the people know that they can come to you and they can get that information. And I think it's, you know, part of like, I'm always doing the plug of the unconscious bias course, right? That's on LinkedIn. And we're telling people, if you haven't watched it, watch it, especially now because it's free. So it's a great opportunity um, to be able to, to look at that and, and to have the awareness. And I get these messages. Again, I don't know why England right now, but I'm, I'm excited because, I, you know, we, we want to get back to England, right? right. <laughs> As you can all tell, Erica's got the accent. I, I lost mine a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but I love being able to go to England. So I just love that all these, these, uh, people from London have been popping up. So yeah, say hi, drop a line. <laughs> um, but it's really great because somebody just this morning sent me a message and said, you know, I watched your unconscious bias course and mm -hmm. I didn't think it had anything to do with me. Like it, it was mandated that by my employer that we watch it mm -hmm. and um so she goes I, I was thinking like this is like oh it's nothing to do with me well why do i have to do this but she said you know what i went through it i watched it and i thought wow that really has opened up my eyes i didn't realize and so that's also part of it right is that perspective change it's like yeah. we just have to be more open yeah and it's um, the awareness isn't it it's the awareness which is which is great which i i love the work that you're doing um and and as I, we had a conversation the other day and i said it's not just about these firms once a year putting on, you know, a DNI seminar for their right. employees. This is ongoing work. This is ongoing right. work. I've had conversations with, um, with, uh, you know, law firm like partners before that, that have said to me, Oh, you know, the diversity thing hasn't worked for me. You know, what hasn't worked for you? I mean, just <laughs> blanket statements like that, that that's just so, um, it, it's ignorant, right? Um, so, so, and, and to say that, you know, what all minority hives haven't worked for you, like right. all, do you understand what you're saying? I mean, it's just, so the work right. is ongoing. It's well, not and what they're saying is not that all it's like you did it that one time and it didn't work. Right. It, by the way, didn't work. It's like, right. no, it didn't work. You right. didn't, work. you didn't do the work that was necessary for this to actually be successful. I literally wrote a Fast Company article about this a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. saying exactly that. Diversity works. If you say, if you ever get ready to say diversity doesn't work, I need you to go look in a mirror and realize, no, you didn't work. Right. Right. <laughs> there are things that you should have done that you have not done. You haven't done, right. So, so it was about, and again, it was about that education piece, right? I had to educate, this is, you know, highly educated individual, had to educate that person like, okay, so that was one person and you can't um, take a group and have that representation by that one person, you know, have that, that one person represent a whole group of people. So, right. you know, maybe that individual didn't work, you know, um, maybe you hired three people and it didn't work, but those are individuals. We're not this homogenous group, 
you know, right. and and I think that even by virtue of people meeting meeting me and and realizing, okay, so this this is somebody who has a different background. This is a diverse person who has a different background. You know, you can't cast everybody with the same brush. You know, with the same brush, it's just um, right. Well, and that's what happened, you know, and in this environment now, people want to go to their their black employees and and say, well, help me, teach me. And it's like, well, I can give you my perspective. You know, both of us were born in London. Both right. of us happen to be black women. Both exactly. of us have completely different perspectives exactly. on life in America and children and work and, and all of it. Our, our stories are different, right? Our stories are different. So... I think that's for people to understand that everybody has a story and everybody's story is different. You know, um, it's, 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 it's very simple. It's simple, but it, but it's made so complicated. It really is. So, Oh my gosh, that's exactly what we talk about. I mean, like we, the, the things that we can do are so simple in, com in, in, you know, in context. Mm -hmm. And, but when I say them, people look at me and go, wait, that's all you want me to do. It's like, yes. Right. Previously, this does not have to be difficult. So I, I really think, um, you know, it, it's great because in the position that you're in, not only, you know, are you advocating for others, but you're role modeling, right? Like people right. can see you walk in the door and I'm sure, especially with your accent, sometimes people don't even realize that you're black, right? Like they talk to you over the phone. <laughs> Absolutely. I've had I've had moments when I've spoken to people over the phone. We've set an appointment. I'll be sitting in the lobby, waiting for them, and they'll come out looking around for the person that they thought they were going to meet. And then it's me. You know, I'm six feet tall. It's like, oh, oh, Erica. <laughs> right. So I and, and in those moments, I love it as well because you've just shifted. You've just shifted somebody's mind. You know, in yeah. terms of their expectations. Right. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah, exactly. I think, and that's, so that's the other thing is that we, we talk about is for others to be able to do those kinds of things. Like, as we go about our day, we are role modeling for others and helping to shift those perspectives. So I think it's really, you know, um, it's really important. So I want to ask you, you know, what difficulties, uh, do you think that, that minority candidates, especially black women face within the legal services industry? Yeah. Well, let me let me talk about it from the attorney perspective specifically. Um, and I think I touched uh, upon it a little bit earlier, but, um, you know, it can be very difficult for, you know, black women uh, lawyers in the law in, in the workplace on, on a number of different fronts. So so now you're in the firm, you've got the position in the firm right now. It all it's about billable hours, billable hours, are, you know, the, the hours that you're working on client matters. You gotta right. get you gotta get those cases to work on, right? So um, a lot of the time, you know, some women are marginalized to the less high profile cases, you know. Right. So that's an issue right there because you know the more high profile cases you're working on, the more visibility you have on the firm. Other people can see or other partners can see the work that you're working on and give you more of those cases. So sometimes it's just, it's can be a struggle for women to even get on those cases, you know. Um, it can be, uh, dealing with just the standard stereotypes, you know, of, of black women being aggressive, you know, um, there, there's, there's confidence and then there's aggression. Sometimes that confidence can be seen as aggression. And so you're, right. you're battling those stereotypes in the, in the workplace as well. Right. Um, you know, the, the, the partnership track, you know, that's, you know, you come in as an associate and then you, you work your way up to hopefully you know, if, if individuals are, are wanting to go down that career path, but it's the partnership track, now you have to be able to prove that you're worthy of partnership. And what that looks like sometimes is, okay, so how's your business development? How's that going? You know, what, what you know, opportunities have you had to profile your, your, your skill set, et cetera? Um, you know, it can, be, it can be very tough because you're, and I've spoken to many, many attorneys that feel like they're continually proving themselves you know, continually proving themselves, continually, um, you know, I had uh, one partner, I was on a call the other day, and she was saying, you know, uh, she she works in this very niche area, and she was saying, you know, walking into a room, she has to lay down her credentials 
first whenever she's in a meeting just so right. the other the other attorneys realize that she's you know she's coming in at the same level or even higher you know right. so um having to deal with that emotionally can really take a toll you know right so um well and i think too it, it, as you said that's a really good point like that takes a toll and makes it harder for you to do the work that you have to do you know right. you come in and need to be on and talking to your clients and be at the top of your game, you know, I always talk about it when you think about like battery life, you know, when you'd have your your cell phone, we all cherish our cell phone battery, right? When your cell phone battery is at 100%, it's great. And, but for many of us, um, for, for women of color, for people of color, we are um, walking through life with our battery already at 70% from the time right. we get up in the morning because there's so many other things that are draining the battery power. You get to work, you're already at 70%, and you've got to deal with microaggressions. You've got to deal with, like you said, having to prove yourself over and over again. By the time you get down to the end of the day, you're like barely, you know, hanging on. Right. <laughs> you're in red for sure. Right, which is why, you know, uh, I always talk to my candidates about self-care, how important it is. Like self-care is, you know, you, 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 you've got to take care of yourself because every day you know for some people it feels like they're going into the battleground you know dealing with the microaggression from co-workers from management now i've got to be able to you know i've got to be able to manage my career in such a way that i'm still getting ahead while dealing with all of this other stuff you know right. um yeah. so uh there was a really powerful visual i was on a seminar the other day it was a really powerful visual of um, two individuals at the start line and then there was the finish line and you had um, a, a diverse candidate, non-diverse candidate, but the diverse candidate had, you know, 15 obstacles. So by right. the time, you know, have you seen that visual? I don't know if you've seen yes. that, mm -hmm. but you're just sort of running around all these obstacles. It's like a, it's, it's like you're in the ring, right? <laughs> you know, on a, on, a, on a daily basis. And it and it can be just absolutely exhausting, you know? It really can. Yeah. So, so the self-care piece is really important. <clears throat> Yeah, and I think so for those that are listening and are in a position or have found themselves, right, that they're, they're the person that maybe might be questioning the, the credentials, right? I wanna speak to you individuals for a moment and say, take a moment, right? The next time you get, you know, a, a person of color walks in the room and you immediately start to, to question, picture that person as a white person, right? Picture that person um, as, the person that you believe is going to be, you know, top of their game and knows their stuff. Mm -hmm. And give people the benefit of the doubt. Allow people the opportunity to do their work and be their best selves without being questioned by you. Before you get ready to ask the question of, well, how would you know this? Or why do you think, you know, like stop and ask yourself, do I need to ask this question? Right. Is this question relevant to yeah. what is being said? And, you know, because I think like that's what we really have to get to is a place where we're able to really be able to walk in a room and do what we do and stop being questioned yeah. um, about our abilities and our skill set. I think last week I talked about maybe the week before we talked about the fact that here's an individual who sent me their resume. I got their resume and I was so blown away because I was forwarding it to somebody because, you know, you've got all these chief diversity officer positions that are open now. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was looking, he wanted one of those positions. And I said, oh my gosh, he's got more credentials. He's got enough credentials for like three different roles, right? right. right. Yet, it's probably not even enough for the one role that he wants. Wow. Yeah. Just because of who he is. And that is so, you know, I hate to say not fair, right? I sound like my children, like, oh, that's not fair. But <laughs> at some point we really have to just go like, damn, that is not the way that we want to be going through life. That is not right. the way that we want to be showing up for others. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and I would always, I would also say, you know, that when when you have somebody coming into an interview, instead of sort of having them, you know, if you've given them zero marks at the beginning and then you're giving them a check mark for everything they have, start out at 100, start at 100 points. Everybody has 100 points. Right. And then go from there versus you know, zero and having, you know, okay, this person's done this, okay, and then making the check marks, you know, that way, if you look at it from that perspective, right. give everybody the benefit of the doubt in that this person's highly credentialed and, and start from there, you know, just as right. a different tactic. 
Exactly. I mean, exactly. Like to go, to go back to your point about, you know, having to prove yourself for partnership and, and, and are you partnership material? It's like, you hired me into this right. firm. Right. <laughs> you right. did that. I am here. Prepare me for partnership. What have you done to prepare me for partnership? How have you positioned me to prepare for partnership? You know? Um, so, but as I said, I think that a lot of firms are um, responding right now in a way that, you know, that they, they, they have this supporting these diversity and inclusion programs, but there are a lot of people, there are a lot of eyes on the firm. So I think that in order for that needle to be moved, I think, I think there's something that feels different this time, you know, right. um, back in the last recession, there were a lot of programs that were put into place and, you know, progress has been made. Look, there are some firms that are even leading the charge here that are saying, okay, they're, they're not just looking at the, the attraction, they're looking at retention. Like how do we re retain individuals? Because, you know, there's a statistic out there that, you know, um, associates sort of drop off minority associates about, about the fifth year, you know, um, but, what's happening at that point? You know, how can we retain people? And what are our metrics, like measuring metrics across the firm? And I think that that's something we need to zero in on. You know, let's look at the metrics. Let's look how that needle is moved, not once every five years, but every year, every six months, let's really pay close attention to that. Yeah, I think that's gonna be a big thing that we're gonna be looking at. You know, we're, we're, a lot of us, you know, diversity consultants, we're getting the calls, right? And we're having the conversations and I think what's really important is to ask the question in six months from now, a year from now, when people are looking at what was mm -hmm. done, what are you going to be able to say that you did? Exactly. Right? And I think that is extremely important. Um, you know, we have a course out there. Um, I know that a lot of recruiters have been getting laid off right now and the things mm -hmm. are kind of trickling, but we do have a course, it's inclusive recruiting and it basically goes through unconscious bias, um, gender issues and LGBTQI a uh, concerns and it kind of helps with language with concepts and it goes a, really a deep dive into uh you know providing recruiters with that information and so i'm gonna drop a link for that course um and a 10 percent off code for those who do have the budget still and are interested it's not much at all it's only like 250 dollars, i think um but it's a great course that people have been going through that helps them to get comfortable with some of the concepts right to get comfortable with some of the language because i realize there are people who you know it's not just like we, we we're in a bubble in los angeles right mm -hmm. we we get to see a lot of diversity but there are people in kentucky there are people in kansas there are people in montana right mm -hmm. who are in their own bubble and they don't have a lot of diversity and they're struggling and they would like to change and they're trying to figure out how. And so I think that, um, you know, being able to provide um, that information to people and helping them with those concepts, I think that's really uh, important to be able to do that. And that's so, very, that's great that you have that, that course available. So um, anybody in those areas? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just what dropping it in now. Yep, there it is it's important to, to educate yourself as well. And that's what it's about, this, this education. And that at the root of this, um, you know, the root of it is fear, really. It's fear of, it's fear of something different, but we're, we're all different. So look at it from that perspective, you know, and 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 help these companies and, you know, let's le level the playing ground, you know? Yeah, definitely. Well, you know, <clears throat> I think that a lot of work is being done uh, in the legal legal field to make it a more safer and more welcoming place. And I think, Erica, you are doing a great job of, of doing that and spearheading it. And so if you have a, a position open and you need assistance in the legal community, Erica is definitely your gal. She will help you find you not only the, you know great candidates, but diverse candidates as well. And uh, so excited to um, really have maintained this this friendship and this relationship for so many years and excited that you were able to participate today with me. So again, Erica, um, Round Hill Search. <laughs> thank you very much. Great, great seeing you and being on with you today. Yes, thank you, thank you. And you can find me at reworkwork.com. So uh, feel free to reach out to us. And of course, we're always uh, accepting LinkedIn requests. So you can connect with either one of us on LinkedIn as well. And we'll be back again next week, 8 a.m. Pacific. All Thank right. You. Bye. Thank you.